if there's an opportunity to get involved with it, we'd love to do that. I didn't know that that meant a sponsorship, but we actually met in Boston. Uh, there was a big conference in Boston called the HubSpot Inbound Conference. We met there and they told me that they wanted to partner on the podcast. So I didn't know what that oh. meant. After the meeting, I went to ChatGPT and said, please give me a couple of sponsor options. And uh, I pitched it to them. I wrote up an email and said, here's a couple of sponsor options. And uh, I did a small option and a big option. And they started with the small option. But I will say that the, the small option was, was still pretty big. Uh, we've been partnered together on the podcast. They've been sponsoring it for coming up on six months. And the sponsorship is over. It's over five figures. I can't talk about the exact figures. I want this podcast to be a master class for everyone who's aspiring to be a creative professional or a content creator. And one beautiful thing that you, we, we can learn from Andrew is that set goals that are doable, but do not quit before they're not, not done. I said I was going to commit to doing 10 episodes. So 10 episode pilot and then see, you know, at that time I could stop. And so that gave me that that removed a lot of the stakes with how much work it is to get started because you're saying, hey, this is a 10 episode pilot. We're going to see what happens. Uh, welcome back, uh, guys, to another podcast. Uh, as I told you, I don't know if, if this is the first episode or the second episode. I'm yet to figure that out. It's it's probably the first in it's one of the three. It's in the two. pilot. It's in the pilot phase. Yeah, uh, it's, it's in the pilot. So, uh, as you all know, the podcast is about attention economy, and our whole purpose with this podcast is to invite creative professionals, po- content creators, creative founders, and talk to them about their creative journey and how they're actually winning it in one way or another in the creative industry. Today I have Andrew, who not only a very uh, a really who, who not only have a really crazy story when it comes to podcasting, but he's also one of my really good friends and he has been one of my past clients as well. So before I, before I give the mic to Andrew, a thing about Andrew is that Andrew got a sponsorship, you know, a thing something which we did not get. After six years of content creation, he got a sponsorship on, on his pilot with zero views and just on the, on the idea. So off to you, Andrew, you can you know, share about yourself first, how, you know, what, who you are, what do you do, how did the idea of podcasting came into being, and then you can talk about the story, how the deal was done. Sure. Thanks, Bilal. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And yes, we, we started as... I think I started as a lead for you. Um, then you were an advisor. You were you were giving me some ideas about how to get the podcast off the ground, and then you became I became a customer to you or a client because uh, I was able to to get funding to get a sponsorship, and and you were one of the first calls that I made after I secured the the sponsorship funding when my podcast was less than five episodes in, and truth be told, I didn't know what I was doing. So you were an amazing partner and um an advisor to getting how the deal was done content and video off the ground i'm really grateful for that and Bilal, you're also one of the best salespeople that i know <laughs> thanks man okay so the cool thing about andrew is you know uh, andrew is not someone who has crazy number of followings andrew is not someone who has been creating content for like 10 years but the cool thing about andrew is that andrew got a sponsor that none of us did on his very first content venture. And we will talk about him. We'll ask him, how did he get that? How did he get the sponsor? What did he tell the client? And how can we get sponsors as well? For sure. Really appreciate that, Bilal. And yeah, as mentioned, I've, I've been a consumer. So I've been a listener of podcasts for over a decade. I've probably listened to thousands of podcasts and well, You know, I thought I was learning a lot from listening to them. I realized after I got started that 90% of it, it's you're just it's kind of just information going into your head. Actually learning is trying to start the podcast, trying to get set up with the 
microphone, the studio, the Riverside, the hosting service, the platform, signing up for Apple Podcasts yeah. and Spotify. That is actual learning and will really kind of make you feel like a novice. And you, you realize that all of the thousands of episodes you've listened to, you know, didn't really teach you what you needed to do. You have to just go out and figure it out. And it was, you know, it's really hard to get started because there's some amazing podcasters and podcast content out there. And you can feel like a novice, like, what am I doing? What, what content do I have to share? Um, and so it took me a few months to, to actually ship it. And, you know, I was doing a lot of research and analysis paralysis. And the reason I was able to get it off the ground, there's a modern day philosopher, thought leader, and, uh, and a person, a friend, uh, a friend of mine, an advisor, his name is Paul Millard. And he wrote a blog post called Ship, Quit, Learn. And the idea is when you're starting something new, commit to getting 10 episodes in. So ship out 10 episodes and then give yourself permission to quit. So I didn't say I was going to start a podcast with 25 episodes and thousands of views, which is where we've gotten to now. I said I was going to commit to doing 10 episodes. So 10 episode pilot and then see, you know, at that time I could stop. And so that gave me that that removed a lot of the stakes with how much work it is to get started because you're saying, hey, this is a 10 episode pilot. We're going to see what happens. And I was actually able to talk to folks in my network and get advice from them, what they thought of the podcast, if they liked it, and frankly, if they were interested in being guests. And I was fortunate enough to have a half a dozen friends and colleagues and folks in my network that agreed to be early guests of the podcast before it was proven whatsoever. One of those guests went on to actually become our initial sponsor. And so... The way I look at it is it's all about relationships. Sales and life and business is about relationships. And so it's easier to work, you know, your your network, they want you to be successful. They're friends, they're partners of you, they're customers, just like we've talked about. Bilal, you've I've been a client for you, and so you asked me about the podcast. I said, of course, because like, you know, we know each other. Whereas Bilal, if you'd reached out and we'd never met before, I probably wouldn't join your podcast right now just because like, you know, you don't have that relationship. So it's about relationship and, and start where it's a little bit easier and, and then go from there. Yep. So, yeah, again, very good. So, you know, again, the whole point of our podcast is to teach and, you know, I want this podcast to be a master class for everyone who's aspiring to be a creative professional or a content creator. And one beautiful thing that you, we, we can learn from Andrew is that set goals that are doable, but do not quit before they're not, not done. Okay. So there's a stat that 80% of the podcasters leave up before seven episodes. So he made sure that I, we, we cross the mark of seven episodes and that's what content is. You know, you will suck. You will have shit content on the first day, the second day, the third day, maybe the hundred day as well. But eventually, you know, there's a very beautiful saying, you are hundred days short or your hundred videos short of your perfect video. So you need to get those done. You need to get those out of the way before you get that perfect piece of content. Okay. So let's dive a bit deeper into, you know, the, not just, you, you told us that you invited him and he accepted that and he was your friend, but let's go a bit deeper. Tell us about the sponsorship how well, the worth of the sponsorship for how much long period was it and you know uh just a heads up for you for the listeners andrew has a really good core creative funnel as well the system you know in which i will we will learn from that as well but let's take it step by step tell us the amount of what was the specific deal was how much of the, for the period and yeah. the compensation yeah, yeah. So the the podcast, the sponsorship, it was really a partnership. And I had been having a couple of conversations with Dan, who Dan Curran is one of the co-founders of Orchard Hub. They built a HubSpot specific app for enterprise sales. And so that helps to visualize your complex enterprise deals natively within the CRM software for HubSpot users. And I had previously used org chart software to visualize my deals using Microsoft PowerPoint and Google slide slide decks. And so creating an org chart, who's the president, who's the director, who's the associate, where am I at in the deal? How high up are they? And things like that. And so I had felt the pain of doing it manually. And I thought it was really clever and innovative that they created a CRM app for that. 
So we had a little bit of a relationship. And we had shout a out bit to of, Dan. Shout out to Dan. Big shout out to Dan. We had a little bit of a, a background before I ever started the podcast. And Dan was actually one of the people that I went to and said, hey, I'm thinking about this podcast. What do you think? And, you know, he, I didn't, this was unbeknownst to me, but him and his co-founder, Austin, shout out to Austin. They had been big fans of podcasts for a decade. And so when I pitched the idea of, hey, Dan, why don't you come on the podcast? He was like, this is really cool. I've done a few podcasts and I'd love to do this. And then naturally they, you know, I think they talked about the idea and they said, if there's an opportunity to get involved with it, we'd love to do that. I didn't know that that meant a sponsorship, but we actually met in Boston. Uh, There was a big conference in Boston called the HubSpot Inbound Conference. We met there and they told me that they wanted to partner on the podcast. So I didn't know what that meant. Uh, after the meeting, I went to ChatGPT and said, please give me a couple of sponsor options. And uh, I pitched it to them. I wrote up an email and said, here's a couple of sponsor options. And uh, I did a small option and a big option. And they started with the small option, but I will say that the the small option was was still pretty big. Uh, We've been partnered together on the podcast. They've been sponsoring it for coming up on six months. And the sponsorship is over it's over five figures. I can't talk about the exact figure, but uh, you know, five figures in US dollars. Oh, wow. Nice. That's nice. No, no wonder why you forwarded me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you were you able to afford me. Anyhow, yeah. that, that, that's cool. So, uh, uh, so you got a sponsorship basically out of... So what did you pitch them exactly? You know, if, if someone wants to replicate that, what, what do you specifically pitch them? Yep, so that we would do an advertisement, a shout out of their Org Chart Hub app on the podcast, that we would host customers of theirs. And, and we actually hosted Dan for a couple of episodes. And uh, Bilal has also been on one of the episodes of, of the podcast, uh, the special edition, holiday edition. And uh, we actually talk a little bit more detail about the deal in that episode. But what we pitched them was, hey, we want to help you know, Bilal, you're an expert in content, content, you just never have enough content. So we were giving them content for they have over a 1000 customers, and they have five to 10,000 people on their newsletter. And so they're able to inform their network and their prospects and their uh, customers with high quality content related to the service of what they do. Well, that's that's okay. So now that we have uh, got the the deal section done, let's come to how did you felt, you know, the first video as a creator, what improvements do you see in your life as a person, you know, who, who never, I, I guess you never hosted a podcast, right? Before this yep. or any video, any video. Yep. Yeah. So a person who was a first time content creator with, 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 this, with a sponsorship on their head, how did you felt and how did it improve you as a person and you know, what are the key insights that you got out from this experience, which you can share with the people, which which can be beneficial? Yeah. Um, there's a saying, I learned this from David Perel, who's a prolific internet writer, and it's called imitate and then innovate. And it talks about imitate those who have walked before you, who have put content out there. Don't copy what they're doing, but use that for inspiration, for structure, and for how you're going to do your episode. And I need to give a shout out to a podcast by Shiv Naranyan, and it's called the Private Equity Value Creation Podcast. And his podcast, it's about a year old now. And I just thought the the clips and the trailers and the brand, the look and feel of the podcast was really high quality. Um, so I kind of used a little bit of that for early inspiration, Bilal and some of the, the creative that we put together. And it's, you know, super helpful to kind of say like, this is what good looks like. This is the... the the creative brief or a style guide of what we want to get to. And then you did a really good job of adhering and, you know, guiding our, how the deal was done, initial content to that, to really get us a nice foundation. Yeah. And one more thing I would love to talk about, you know, because as a, as someone who helps clients or as someone who sells the services, you know, when you're in a creative niche, because creative is subjective, so you cannot necessarily all the time meet the expectations of the client. You know, so it's really important to set some SOPs up front so that you know that you align on the same thing, which you call quality content, you know, and I have had bad experience as well. I I have shared a few with Andrew as well, but, but there are two types of clients, you know, the, the healthy clients. There's one like Sean, 
Sean was someone who introduced me to Andrew, by the way. He's like, he gives me the free, creative freedom. He's like, go ahead, it's your playground. Play, innovate, experiment, adapt, and repeat the circle. And then there's someone like Andrew, who's who's really focused on what he wants. And he has a great, great, you know, a great uh, content system. The way he manages the content and the flow, it's really beautiful. We will, we will learn from him as well uh, later on. So there are two, you know, that's how you do it. Either you tell them your expectations and how they make, or you or you give them the free freedom. And then there's a third client who's like, who doesn't have an expectation, but he doesn't like what you do have to make as well. So there's, there's someone, you know, in which you can get a, with, with which you can have a bit of gray area. Anyhow, so I, one thing about Andrew was that he was very specific. You know, he asked me about what I was thought. You know, he always respected my opinion as a creative specialist. He was he always respected my opinion. He, you know, he was very flexible. And if if there was something which not which was not able to, which was not able to happen technically, and I convinced him, he was flexible. But he was very specific on what he wanted as well, which is a really good thing. And one thing I really love about love about uh, Andrew was that I did not have to go back and forth every day, every video with him on how we need to do this, how we cannot do this, because of the beautiful system that he had created. And I will uh, I would like to ask Andrew himself to explain what the system was. Sure, sure. So we we set up the a process in Notion, and it was um, think of it as like an assembly line or a pipeline. And you have the an idea. So we everyone has ideas. Ideas are easy. Execution is hard. And so we have a place to park the ideas, kind of in a parking lot. And you can take the, the best ideas or the simplest ideas, and you want to get them started. So then you do a little bit better job of, um, of creating a outline or a preview or some inspiration, some guardrails for what the content is going to look like. You get the raw materials, you get the inspiration, and you prep that. And then we would do a handoff, like a relay race, pass it on to Bilal's team. Bilal's team would pick it up and do a rough draft, a rough cut. We'd see how it's looking. We'd make a couple of tweaks. And then just a couple of days later, it would show up as the, the final content in a really streamlined fashion with, with high-end work. So it was a Kanban board of backlog, like a idea, planning, passed off to the to Bilal's team, first draft, second draft, and then final final product. Yep, and the, we for you know, and the tools that we used were Loom and Notion. Yep. yep. So, we, so yeah. And so, Canva. Yeah. And Canva. And Canva too. You will you will explain that further, or should I? Uh yeah. So I I'm not a creative person. Um, I, I guess I'm creative. I know what creative ideas look like, but I'm not a designer. And Canva just does a really good job of like allowing me to create rough drafts that can be translated and understood by a creative person like Bilal's team and some other creative folks that we work with. Yeah. So it, it was like that he, he, he made a rough storyboard with a few references and then he loomed me about it so that I do not get, you know, because we have time differences as well. Plus we both are working professionals. So we do not have time to go on meetings all day and go back and forth on text every day. So he just gave me a two minute loom explaining what he did. And then I just can get, give him a rough draft that is it, is it something which which resonates with you? Or is it something that you really want out of it? And he's like, yeah, it, it is. Or, you know, maybe a few things here and there, a few twitches and boom, we had the final product. In like yeah. two, three days with no hustle, with no arguments, with no back and forth and with no, you know, uh, delay or anything of that. So which was, a, which was a perfect, perfect roadmap for anyone who wants to manage a team or who wants to manage his content flow. That's the perfect uh, content system you can copy from this, you know, from uh, Andrew. Shout out to Andrew for that. Thank you. Yep. It's, okay. Notion, it's Notion, it's Loom, it's Canva. And then it's, it's yep. high-end talent. Yep. It's highly talent. And it's clarity too. It's clarity too. You know, it's clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I know that, you know, we, it's, it will be a small, smaller podcast in duration because Andrew has to go somewhere as well. Uh, he has to, he's a, he has a little meeting in like five minutes. Yep. So we'll just ask him a few, uh, you know, a last question or maybe a few last questions. Uh, not just questions, but, you know, a few things. Firstly, uh, how was your, you know, experience working with us? Secondly, I told you about my agency. So how do you look forward to that? Sure, sure. Yeah, it was a great experience. Bilal, you had 
gave me guidance and advisory and suggestions before I even had a podcast, before I had any content. Um, so you did a good job educating me before we even got started. And you were there once I got the funding, when I secured the sponsorship. So it became a, a really straightforward process. You know, throughout you, communication was really good. The um, commitment to quality was really high. And the uh, innovation, you know, we were always trying, we, were, we had our foundation, but we were always testing the limits to test out new content as well. Yep. And one last thing for anyone who's trying to, you know, who, who has something, who, ha who has an idea or an aspiration to create a podcast or maybe a, a channel, a YouTube channel or whatever, but he's shy, you know, he's someone like us who, you know, who, whose main thing is not YouTubing, but it's, it's secondary thing. What advice or what inspiration would you give to them? You know, and, and um, being a ship, part, quit, learn, part, ship, yeah. sh ship, quit, yeah. learn, just, you know, minimum viable, just get started. Uh, talk to your friends, talk to your network and, you know, get started with your, with folks that you already know. And uh, that's how you get going. Thanks. So thank you once again, Andrew. This was a uh, relatively slow, but really, really relatively short, but really, yeah. really productive, you know, very, really productive, really, really fast conversation that we had. The key is to ship. Uh, Quit as in give yourself permission to stop, you know, get, get to 10 yeah. and then say, I'm going to walk away. Once you've got sure. to f four or five, six, seven, you're like, Hey, I like this. I'm going to keep going, but give yourself permission to sure. stop. Yep. Keep her. So these were the key, well, I never said that again, you know, your, your network is your net worth, basically. So always bag, you can bag on your network. You can bag and you, it's, it's okay to ask people, it's okay to tell people, you know, maybe they, they might be interested in what you have to present. It's okay to always pitch. And so that it's, you know, it's really important to always explore new things. Even if you have a stable career and everything, it's okay to try, it's okay to explore. And that's what we learned from the story of Andrew that you know content is for everyone firstly everyone needs to do content as well as he told you that it's really important for grooming and self-development as well other than that it does not you do not need to be a celebrity or a 10,000 follower account to get sponsorship you, you you need to have a solid idea a solid basis a solid plan and you need to pitch the right person and you can get the deal done and yep. that was how the deal was done there we go. Wow. Yeah. Link to link to the podcast in uh, in the show notes if anyone wants to check it out and uh, reach out. Yep. 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 So that was Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Once again, you know, you always have been a really kind brother. You know, I, I you know, my as you, you complimented me earlier that I'm a good salesperson, but my technique is really simple. I make sure that connections are beyond just connect, formal connections. They are, you know, I we, we have a talk every now and then, even if we do not have any, any transactional value to share. Let's just talk like brothers, you know, like, like friends every now and then. It's, it's okay to, you, know, you do not need to be, you do, you do not need to give something to us, something as well. Anyhow, thank you once again. Lovely talking to you. And I hope to see you soon. You know. Thanks. Thanks, Blah. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.